Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we remember Clement of Rome. Clement, who lived from about AD 35 until AD 100, is remembered for having established the pattern of apostolic authority that governed the Christian church during the first and second centuries. He also insisted on keeping Christ at the center of the church's worship and outreach. In a letter to the Christians at Corinth, he emphasized the centrality of Jesus's death and resurrection. Let us fix our eyes on the blood of Christ, realizing how precious it is to his father, since it, is, since it was poured out for our salvation and brought the grace of repentance to the whole world. Prior to suffering a martyr's death by drowning, Clement displayed a steadfast Christ-like love for God's redeemed people, serving as an inspiration to future generations to continue to build the church on the foundation of the prophets and apostles with Christ as the one and only cornerstone. Our psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 39. Lord, make me aware of my end and the number of my days, so that I will know how short-lived I am. In fact, you have made my days just inches long, and my lifespan is as nothing to you. Yes, every human being stands as only a vapor. Yes, a person goes about like a mere shadow. Indeed, they rush around in vain, gathering possessions without knowing who will get them. Now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Rescue me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the taunt of fools. I am speechless. I do not open my mouth because of what you have done. Remove your torment from me because of the force of your hand I am finished. You discipline a person with punishment for iniquity, consuming like a moth what is precious to him. Yes, every human being is only a vapor. Hear my prayer, Lord, and listen to my cry for help. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am here with you as an alien, a temporary resident like all my ancestors. As we continue reading in the prophecy of Daniel, today we hear about the courage and boldness um, and steadfast faith of Shadrach, Meshach, Shach, and Abednego who continued to remain faithful to the Lord in spite of the threats of King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet high and nine feet wide. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to assemble the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces to attend the dedication of the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces assembled for the dedication of the statue the king had set up. Then they stood before the statue Nebuchadnezzar had set up. A herald loudly proclaimed, people of every nation and language, you are commanded when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, drum, and every kind of music, you are to fall face down and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. But whoever does not fall down and worship it will immediately be thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and every kind of music, People of every nation and language fell down and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Some Chaldeans took this occasion to come forward and maliciously accuse the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, may the king live forever. You as king have issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, drum, and every kind of music must fall down and worship the gold statue. Whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. 
There are some Jews you have appointed to manage the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men have ignored you, the king. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Then, in a furious rage, Nebuchadnezzar gave orders to bring in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought in before the king. Nebuchadnezzar asked them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you don't serve my gods or worship the gold statue I have set up? Now, if you're ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, drum, and every kind of music, fall down and worship the statue I made. But if you don't worship it, you will immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God who can rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to give you an answer to this question. If the God we serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire and he can rescue us from the power of you, the king. But even if he does not rescue us, we want you as king to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the gold statue you set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with rage, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave orders to heat the furnace seven times more than was customary. And he commanded some of the best soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So these men in their trousers, robes, head coverings, and other clothes were tied up and thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Since the king's command was so urgent and the furnace extremely hot, the raging flames killed those men who carried up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in alarm. He said to his advisors, didn't we throw three men bound into the fire? Yes, of course, your majesty, they replied to the king. He exclaimed, look, I see four men, not tied, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come out. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. When the satraps, prefects, governors, and the king's advisors gathered round, they saw that the fire had no effect on the bodies of these men. Not a hair of their heads was singed. Their robes were unaffected and there was no smell of fire on them. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him. They violated the king's command and risked their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore, I issue a decree that anyone of any people, nation, or language who says anything offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be turn, torn limb from limb, and his house made a garbage dump. For there is no other God who is able to deliver like this. Then the king rewarded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. As we continue reading in the book of Revelation, today we see that Satan, although he can cause a lot of trouble, is not unlimited in what he can do. He has indeed been bound and limited by God, who has won the victory over him. And because our Savior has won the victory over him, so have all his people. When I saw an angel, or then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key to the abyss and a great chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss, closed it, and put a seal on it so that he would no longer deceive the nations until the thousand years were completed. After that, he must be released for a short time. Then I saw thrones and people seated on them who were given authority to judge. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God 
who had not worshiped the beast or his image and who had not accepted the mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea. They came up across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the encampment of the saints, the beloved city. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed them. The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and one seated on it. Earth and heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. I also saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by what was written in the books. Then the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. Each one was judged according to their works. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Our writing for today comes from the man whom we are remembering today, Clement of Rome. But not to dwell upon ancient examples, let us come to the most recent spiritual heroes. Let us take the noble examples furnished in our own generation. Through envy and jealousy, the greatest and most righteous pillars of the church have been persecuted and put to death. Let us set before our eyes the illustrious apostles. Peter, through unrighteous envy, endured not one or two, but numerous labors. And when he had at length suffered martyrdom, departed to the place of glory due to him. Owing to envy, Paul also obtained the reward of patient endurance after being seven times thrown into captivity, compelled to flee, and stoned. After preaching both in the East and West, he gained the illustrious reputation due his faith, having taught righteousness to the whole world. And coming to the extreme limit of the West, he suffered martyrdom under the prefects. Thus was he removed from the world and went into the holy place having proved himself a striking example of patience. It is right and holy, therefore, men and brethren, to obey God rather than to follow those who through pride and sedition have become the leaders of a detestable emulation. For we shall incur no slight injury, but rather great danger, if we rashly, rashly yield ourselves to the inclinations of men who aim at exciting strife and tumults, so as to draw us away from what is good. Let us be kind one to another after the pattern of the tender mercy and kindness of our creator. For it is written, the kind hearted shall inhabit the land and the guiltless shall be left upon it, but transgressors shall be destroyed from off of the face of it. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Lord God, to thee we all give praise. The ancient dragon is their foe, his envy and his wrath they know. It always is his aim and pride, thy Christian people, to divide. And we pray. Almighty God, your servant Clement of Rome, called the church in Corinth to repentance and faith, to unite them in Christian love. Grant that your church may be anchored in your truth by the presence of the Holy Spirit, and kept blameless in your service until the coming of, your, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.